Welcome, everybody, to the Patty G Show. I am your host, Patty G, here with Derek Shipley, lead singer of Parish County Line here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Thank you, Derek, so very much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So for for those that aren't necessarily aware, what is what is Parish County Line? What kind of music do y'all do? What's what's the band to you? Uh, Parish County Line started about ten years ago, and we like to play country music and we like to have fun. And we like to have a good time. If you come to a show, that's what you're going to get. That's one thing I like about Paris County Lines because what you see on that stage is exactly where we are in our everyday lives. We just like to have fun, drink a few cold ones, play guitar, whether we're around a campfire or on a stage in front of 10,000 people, it don't matter. Right. We're going to still do the same thing. So that's what Paris County Lines is all about. And uh, and I have fun with it, you know, and all the guy, other guys have fun with it. And so we just go with it. Yeah, and I feel like that's music in general. You got to have fun. Oh yes. Because if you're not having fun, I mean, what do you? Why are you up there to begin with? Yep. Because it's music. Music getting easy. Correct. Well, yeah, you're right. It's <laughs> I, not. I can't get it, up there when and it play. comes down to, to doing it as a business. It, it gets it gets rough. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got. I mean, we're, we're going to get into all the the business side of things and how that's run. Because I'm interested to see how it's. To me, a standard business is you've got your. You've got your seasonal businesses that fluctuate, right? Yes. But then y'all's is like very, very fluctuational when it comes to seasons. And even now with what's going on with people can't go out and have an almost 10,000 people gathering. Yeah. So then you got to pivot in that nature. Correct. But I want to get a little more history about the band and how it kind of, how it got started. Well, I used to do a lot of uh, acoustic shows. Uh, I used to play at walk-ons a lot, almost every Thursday night with a buddy of mine named Scotty Van Matry and, uh, you know, I got to, so me and him started playing these acoustic shows and I got in good with these bar owners and club owners and stuff like that where we were playing and played a lot of tailgates around LSU and just meeting all these great, great people. And, uh, so I just had a, I always had an itch to, to play 90s country music. That was 90s my, country. that was my, at George Strait, Alan Jackson, Shenandoah, Diamond Rio. I mean, all those, all that great music back in the day. And uh, I always wanted to play that. I always wanted to, to, to get a group of guys and just no matter if we made it or not, I wasn't trying to make it. And I was just trying to have a good time, play cover music. I mean, that's what we were going to do. And that's what we did for a long time. And we still do a lot. And uh, we'll always do. And, yeah. uh, but, you know, so I was playing at Walk Ons and I was trying to get these things together. And I had a drummer lined out and uh i was looking for a bass player and i saw this little short dude uh one day and he, we started talking and i was like so yeah man i'm trying to start up this this 90s country cover band in baton rouge i said i don't think there's enough of that great music around here so uh he's like man i love that kind of music you know we got to talking and hit it all good well i said what do you i said well, do you play the bass i said i got, I got a drummer lined out i said his name is riley varner dude he goes get out of here he knew him huh that was his first cousin really so yeah so i was like D are you kidding me he's like man i played with in church with riley growing up and everything we've been first cousin playing music together i said well do you play the bass he's like well i mean i've thump on it a few times and uh he said in church band and stuff like that so so we got to talking and you know we said well let's just let's just get together and play so we did and we started i, I got a list of songs that i wanted to play and and we got together, and I was like, you know, with me being uh, been playing a couple of years already in right. the in the uh, restaurant scenes and stuff like that. Well, we got our first gig at Hot Tails and New Rose, and uh, my boy Cody over there, he let he let us come in there, and our first gig was a three piece. It was me with a guitar and Travis with a bass, and Riley, his first cousin, on drums. And we started, you know, we we played a show. And I don't know how we did. We probably sounded like dung but uh <laughs> everybody's got to start somewhere yeah you so, can't uh, come out sounding like rock stars on day yeah, one yeah no, yeah exactly so uh you know we played a couple shows i was doing a i was hosting an open mic night at happy's hours pub and nobody showed up to play so i had to play the whole thing so uh <laughs> we so we we i just decided well help if i got to play then let's just make it kind of like a wednesday night practice you know so i'd bring the band up there and we just play and we you know we practice a little bit and then we so we uh we found this guy from um, St. Francisville, Louisiana, and uh, his mom and daddy came to a show. He's like, "Y'all looking for a lead guitar player?" And I was playing just guitar by myself. I was like, "Yes, we are." <laughs> and uh, I said, "I don't, I don't." Yes, we are. I said, "I said yes, ma'am." And uh, so they was like, "Well, our son plays. You know, he he's been looking for a band to join." I was like, "Well, 
give him my number, tell him to call. So we actually, when he came to his uh, audition, mm -hmm. was actually a show, a, a big a crawfish ball we was playing, a private crawfish ball. And we was like, hey, man, show up to this show. You know, I don't even think we gave him any songs. Like, just come jam with us. So he got in, and he just started playing with us and just fed in. I mean, Ross is just a great guy, kind of quiet, but love him to death. Uh, and then – you you know, a couple of years went on. We just playing a lot. We got into the, uh, the the college scene then. You know, we was doing a lot of college bars and bogeys and frizz and uh, and you know Tigerland and stuff like that. And still doing walk ons every now and then and and uh, a couple shows here and there. A lot of private parties. Well, uh, we had this guy that was contacting us on our Facebook page. Am I talking too much? No, dude, keep this going. Good? You're perfect. Okay. You're perf I, I'm, I'm soaking this all up, man. I'm <laughs> so we had this, this guy contact us on our Facebook page, and he's like, man, y'all looking for a steel player? And, you know, we wasn't making that much money at the time, and we was like, and I, I was like, I always, you know, 90s country. Yeah, yeah. You got to have that steel. You got to have the steel guitar. And, uh, so I was like, bro, when he, he said that, and you know, kind of brushed him off a little bit under the first time, and and uh, you know, we talked about it, and I was like, man, I just don't know if I can, we could pay, you know, I mean, we ain't gonna make nothing. So uh, in a while, so a little while later, a couple months went by, and he hit us up again. He's like, man, I, I'd love to to uh, come join on join in with you guys on a steel guitar. And I was like, and he was at the time, I think Zach was twenty four. I don't know how old he is now. I could See, be he wrong. Was, he was young. But he's been playing with us for like three, three, four years now. But uh, it, so he was like, man, you're never going to find anybody that no, even, even knows how to semi-play the steel guitar. That's what I was about Unless to ask. Unless you're in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. How, how frequent, like how many steel guitar players are there like in the Baton Rouge or even Louisiana it, It's tough. I mean, they got some good ones. I know. I mean, they got a lot, They got some bands out there that have some great steel guitar players, but they taken for a reason. Right. Because there's <laughs> not a lot of them. Yeah. It's, so, it's not like one of those instruments. It's not like, oh, you're a regular guitarist. Oh, you're a regular bass. It's perfect. You can come join the team. It's, one are of you the, playing one steel of the hardest guitar? One of the hardest instruments to play ever. I've but, never I've never dabbled in guitar, oh, man, and saxophone, and piano, and drums, but that was about it. You gotta you gotta play it with your with both hands, both knees, and both feet. And so it's like a, it's like an organ. Yeah, and you're like it's you're like bending, playing an organ. You're bending bars with your knees and pushing pedals with your feet and oh, picks on this hand and sliding with this. I, 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 there's no way I could do it. I'm not that talented, but uh, but Zach, man, Zach took up the took up the steel and uh, he's still learning, man. He's doing great and uh. So he kind of he's like, so he came on board and make make that long story short he came on board and Zach just fit it man he looked like the you know he he's got the old country music he's got the seventies Hank Williams Merrill Haggard Waylon Jennings look going and, you know it just fit us and we, we all got that's one thing about PCL we got all got our own look and uh, you know we, at the time we were younger than we are now you know ten years ago, well that wasn't ten years ago but when we started. Uh, but anyway, he so he joined on and we started playing. You know, we started getting more shows and you know we started getting more requests and the songs we were playing. Obviously, everybody was liking it and everything. And we started getting into you know writing our own stuff. Yeah, you know we'll probably get into that more later. But uh, but then so I was like, I, it was it's something. It was just something that was missing. And I and I've, I've all, and my buddy Seth the Cock used to play guitar for uh, uh, another good buddy of mine, Todd O'Neill. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I always I always just sit there and watch it. And, and and Todd and Seth were great together. And uh, but you know, you know things go on and people move on, do different things. Todd sings for the Chewies now and does his own thing too. But uh, Seth, you know, I, I, I always want to play with Seth the Cop. I don't know what it was about it, but I always want to play on the stage with Seth the Cop because the dude just just smooth. He's like a he's a smooth guitar player. He just he flows with it right. and he's. That was that hair back, you know, and he, he just he just he it just got it it, yeah. So uh, I called, I contacted him one day. Me and him done a couple acoustic shows together and became buddies, you know, through the seeing each other around. And so he, I was like, man, you, I was like, I would love, we'd love to bring you on board. And I talked to the guys about it, you know. I was like, you know, bring Seth on, you know, I can. It allows me to put my guitar down every now and then, and you know, sing and interact with the crowd. And, right. And uh, so that's when that's when we got with Seth. So now it's six piece. Get a full now we have six now. piece from a three piece to a six piece. And how how was that time frame? How many years? Uh, well, see, so we started all well, about nine. I want to say about in between nine and ten years ago we started. I think we're probably in the middle of it. So, uh, yeah, about in between nine nine and ten years from a three piece to a six piece. Very nice. And so, the your what was your first set like? 
going out? Was it just you? Did you have a friend of yours, or was it you and a guitar and a microphone? Oh, my first set. Your that, first, your first set you ever played with the band, or just me? Just you in general. And music, oh man, your, your first start as a set. Well, I used to play music. I used to play in a rock band back in in junior college when I was at Southwest Mississippi Community College, and uh, I met some guys over there, and we played some Creed and and um, you know Nirvana and stuff like that. And you know, I wasn't really into that. I didn't have that look or nothing like that. I just liked to play guitar, and I liked rock music, and I liked country music, and I liked right. you know what I mean. I just wanted to play, and. Uh, so I, you know, I started playing shows early, and I, you know, my my I grew up on bluegrass music. Okay. So my my daddy pushed bluegrass music on us, big time. He would he had a fifth wheel camper, and he would take off on the weekends and go for a whole weekend and just listen to nothing but bluegrass music all day. So and he would take us as kids, and we all went at his families, and then we started playing. Uh, my older brother's very very talented. My mom was talented. My younger brother is talented, but he's just too, he was always too shy, so he never did do anything with it. Uh, so we, we we had a family band, really, and we played in churches all over. We played a couple of bluegrass festivals, regional, you know, in the region, and uh, you know we just grew up on bluegrass music, and I still love it to this day. And uh, but you know that's that would probably be the church scene was would would be my would be my first time just to get up and play in front of him. And you know, as far as like. My career scene is like when I started taking off. I don't know. It'd probably be some daiquiri shop or something. I, I, that's what I'd have to guess. And I've been so yeah. so many of them so long ago. Right. It'd probably be some. You know, I played in so many bars around around here, and and uh, even in Vidalia and Natchez, and you know, I used to live over there for a couple of years and played a lot of bars around there. Met a lot of great great musicians over there. Got some good talent over there too. Yeah. But uh, that's about it. Yeah. It's it's. To me, it's almost like nerve wracking to go and ask somebody like a daiquiri shop or a bar owner, "Hey, can I come play on your stage well, for the night?" The thing about it is, you know, I, I kind of jumped into that. I didn't have to ask them uh, because I would. I was already playing with a with a guy. You know, I kind of jumped in the Baton Rouge scene with my buddy Scotty, and uh, he he used to be the uh, GM of Miller Miller Beer Baton Rouge Beverage here, and uh, so me and him would go. And he loved to play music, and we just hit it off and. And uh, I was he actually walked in my wedding and it's best friends to this day. But he yeah. actually moved to Birmingham. I don't get to talk to him that much anymore. But anyway, I saw I kind of jumped in. So whenever it was time for me to do my own thing, I already had this the the relationship established. You know, with most of the the bars and and I'd call you know my buddy Muzzy that used to own bogies. I'd be like Muzzy, you know, can I, I got Paris? I'm forming this band. Sure, man. You know, I've been playing there. You know, he know he knew who I was. He right. he didn't doubt me. You know, yeah, of course. So. But uh, you know, just that's how that's how we got started. You know, playing around and I love it, and, man. Uh, yeah. So how, how where where does the name come from, Parish County Line? Uh, well, let me tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this story before I'm gonna tell you where it, where it came from. Okay. We was, get some context. I said, I said we were, we used to uh, I used to host the open mic night at Happy's. Right. And uh, on Corsi, and uh, when we had the name and everything, and I was like, man, I was trying to think of this name, and I was like, and. I, it's the hardest thing to do ever is come up with a band name that nobody's name for anything yeah. business. So I come up with this name and I was like, well, so I'm from originally from Centerville, Mississippi. So, uh, and all the guys I was, all the guys from Louisiana where, where I actually grew up from uh, was lived or actually lived is on the state line. Okay. If you go into Clinton, if you go north, going like you're going to Liberty, right when you cross that Mississippi line, there's three bridges, and all that land to the right from the line back was my grandpa's. And uh, I don't know how many acres it was. I think it was like in between six and 800 acres. Uh, but I grew up there, and so so I, when, I, when I got to think about this band name, I was like, I got to come up with something good because I've been in bands before. I've come up with these names, and I was like, got to come up with something good. I said, well, I'm from Mississippi, and my boys are from Louisiana that's playing with me. And I said, I grew up on a line. and I said, Par It came and hit me, Parish County Line. And so I was like, man, that sounds good. It sounds good. Got a good so, in, so about the time we were playing it, about the time we was a three-piece, and I just come up with this band name, about two months later, Florida Georgia Line came out with – Baby, you a song you made me want to roll my windows down. And that was their number one. It, it actually went number one, I think. But 
And I was like, they come out down in Florida, draw a line. Well, we started trying to get, started getting a little bigger. You know, we was just a three piece, man. We was nothing. Yeah. We started getting a little bigger. And, you know, people made the comments like, man, they, they got the name from Florida Georgia Line. I was like, that's honestly, I did not. I did not know who Florida Georgia Line was until they came out with that song on a radio cruise. Right. And they was probably a band before us, but I didn't know, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's pretty much how I come up with that name, and everybody loved it, and it's stuck with us. And it, we like it because you can go Parish County Line or PCL, kind of short, you know, PCL. Everybody goes, right. I'm going to see PCL tonight. Yeah. So it kind of kind of flows, you know. Yeah, it's not like some it, – it flows well with a full name or just a letter of yeah. the name. Yeah, yeah. So you did the church scene, did the rock scene, did the country scene. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's all very different. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's a wide span, and I'd I'd I'd, I'd, I'd play all of it again, man. I I really would. Yeah. Uh, I love to play. I love to play music. I mean, you come to a PCL show, you might. I mean, you're probably gonna hear "Zombie" by the Cranberries. I mean, I mean, I just I just love that song. It's something about that song. I just the dry name thing, but uh, you know, you're gonna hear some classic rock. You know, you're gonna hear a lot of country. You're gonna hear a lot of '90s. You're gonna hear some of our own songs. You're gonna hear. Uh, some of the days country with throwing a few of those, you know, and it just, it's kind of like a mixture, but we have a good time with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, and that's, it goes back to that. Having a good time when you're playing music. That's the most important. We got a motto. PCL's got a motto. We're not, we're not trying to make the big time. We're here to have a good time. I love it. So, uh, that, and that's been our motto since day one. And we, that's all, that's exactly how we feel every time we get on that stage. Oh yeah. Yeah. So going into the, the music scene from Mississippi down to Baton Rouge, what is the, what was the music scene like when you got started and kind of how has it progressed over the years that you've seen it? In Baton Rouge? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, I really don't know about the big music scene because I was doing so many small venues, mm. uh, you know, daiquiri shops when I first got started around this Gonzales, Prairie View, you know, doing the restaurants and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, and then we started doing the Texas clubs and, and stuff like that, but I mean, I, 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 Baton Rouge has always been pretty good about since I've been playing. That's pretty good about their music scene. I mean, they got a lot. The talent around here is unreal. I mean, I've met so many people and so many great people and great musicians through throughout. You know, playing downtown and you know everywhere. I mean, it's just got incredible. I mean, right. Amber McCann, she's one of the greatest singers around here. She's got a solid voice. Got Chase Tyler. Chase Tyler's. He's good, man. He puts on a good show. And, uh, you know, the, the almighty Chris LeBlanc, you know, Chris LeBlanc's been around a long time. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, so it, nobody knew who the Miss, you know, nobody knew who the Mississippi boy was. And I wasn't trying to you know, outdo nobody or anything like that. I just wanted to get plugged in, you know, around here in the music scene because it was good. And I, I wasn't planning on moving, moving to Nashville and, and trying to start anything, right. you know. Well, and that, I was trying to start a country club. Yeah. Band. <laughs> and that's the follow up question yeah. is why? Why is it like stuck in and stayed in to Baton Rouge when it's typically, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it's typically a cover heavy city. Yeah. We like covers. Oh, yeah. You know, if you come out with an original, it better be real good. Yeah. And you better, we better that, know that it is, before that you is, go to the That's first a whole concert. nother story is trying to get uh, audiences and fans listening to new bands to listen to your original music. I mean, it, it's tough. I mean, you play an original song and they just kind of like start talking to each other. It's like, I don't know that one. Yeah. So let's go to the next one. But, uh, but you know, it, it, it you know, the radio, that's when the radio helps out a lot. You know, well, I mean, you got to give it to the radio stations. I mean, 100.7, and, I mean, they, they've done a really excellent with promoting hometown country music, you know. I don't know if they still do it. I don't really, I don't really listen to the radio that much anymore <clears throat> unless I turn it on outside while I'm cooking. But uh, but they used to do this uh, – they featured hometown musicians for an hour, and they would just play all their stuff, you know. Right. I mean, they play Chase Tyler and Lane, Lane Hardy, you know, and this and that. Well, Lane gets played on big shows now, you know. But uh, yeah, you went, you went American. Yeah, Island. you, you went go American. On the big stage. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, you know, the radio helps out with that tremendously as far as getting your originals out. And uh, you know, we've we've had a radio stations play our stuff, from, you know, regionally and stuff like that. But you know, we was actually doing good until this uh. Thing called COVID hit. Right, right. Yeah, I want to yeah. get in the 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 pivoting with that because I'm curious as to how. So people that when you when you sing a cover song, they know the cover song most likely. Otherwise, you're not going to sing it. Yeah, you know, unless you're finding some squirrely stuff. That's, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take that back. Okay. If if I like a cover song and uh -huh. I think it's good, I'm gonna cover it. 
Okay, regardless so, of how popular it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's so many songs that are better than the ones on the radio that are hidden in those albums. And, they, you know, people that really dive into the music is going to know which one you're talking about. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you know, your typical, you go to a, you know, I got friends in. Yeah. Like, everybody's going to know that song. Right. So, uh, but then you bring out some of the, the old Brooks and Dunn and, you know, and and just the old Keith Whitley or, or, or Merle Haggard. You know, you dig on when I'm, we play all that. And so, uh, you get you find the people the the right people is gonna say man that's what I do when I go to a concert when they, when 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 I hear a, a a great artist just dig deep and and sing a good old cover song you know it's it's, it's nothing like it and you'd be like man I ain't heard that song in a while you know I mean we we like just for instance we play uh, Independence Day my Martina McBride you know what I mean we we Martina mean we, McBride. yeah that's what we we cover that song yeah and when people when people go to it's like man that ain't they got a they got a bunch of, they got six dudes up there playing <laughs> playing Martina McBride Independence Day, but I mean everybody sings along to it because it was it's, such a great it's, song. It's a you great know? song and it, music connects to people emotionally. Yeah, and when they start knowing the song, we play What's Up by Four it. Nine Blondes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything. I mean, we just we just, ain't no telling what you're gonna see. When you come in. <laughs> but that's the good part about it is you're not you don't go there and like oh they're gonna play their six songs or twelve songs of theirs. Yeah, and that's it. Oh yeah. yeah. If I don't, and if you don't know, I don't think I'll songs. ever do that. Yeah. Even if I was, I don't. I mean, you know, Luke Combs plays covers. You know, all them guys. I mean, they, I like. I I'll, I'll, until I, until my fingers won't let me play anymore, or this voice won't let me sing, or these ears go out. <laughs> we can work around the ears though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or these ears go out. I'll always play country cover music, no matter no matter what it is. I mean, call me call me a cover band all you want. I like I like good old country music because it's what. You know, listening to that stuff is what helped me along through what I, what I do now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every day but I listen to it. And you put your own twist on it. Yeah. You're not singing it exactly like yeah, you mean, ain't no. you ain't singing Independence Day. I like to try like to Martina sing like George Jones. I like to try to sing like George Jones a lot, yeah. but I just can't do it. <laughs> Everybody's got a unique voice yeah. and everybody plays differently. And like you said earlier, your band, y'all y'all aren't dressing like the Beatles. You're not no. all the same. No. Everybody's got their own flair, no. their own yeah. personality, and I love that. I love the fact that a band can come out. I mean, and a lot of bands do. I'm not saying that not many bands do. Yeah. But I love to see when each you can pick each individual player and show their uniqueness and their own point and their own And brand. I think that's what that's what uh, helps us out a lot because everybody's got their own personality up there. And yeah. Every, I mean, I've had, I got they, they got PCL fans that might not like me but love uh, Trent back there on the drums, you know. Right. Takes his shirt off before every show, you know. <laughs> He used to play in a in a band, and you may know who around here called the Sue Joe Hansons. I've heard of them. You heard of them? Yeah. Well, uh, he used to play. He used to play drum for them, and uh, but you know he's he's wild and crazy, and and had, loves to have a good time, and and uh, it, we just love love playing music. Man. Yeah. So on the on the original side of things, before kind of the big social media buzz and what we're in now with, I mean, how we're literally doing a show on Facebook right now. Yeah. But. Having that access, do you think that's going to be a good thing for originals? That you can now play some of your music and put it on like your Instagram story or your Facebook story to get it's like not I want to say cutting out the radio, but getting directly to your fans that already know who you are, oh, that yeah. are already following your. Oh, page. dude, yes, I would. It definitely helps. I mean, uh, you know, it's so much, it's so easy now. I mean, you can go right. to you just go to you want to hear PCL, just type, go to YouTube and hear, listen to one of the songs free, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's so easy to do, to do now. And, uh, but I mean, if it clicks, it clicks. If it don't, then so be it. You know what I mean? Right. It, it is what it is. I mean, if it don't, I mean, I've been, I've, I've written a couple songs, uh, since all the quarantine and everything and almost ready to, to put out a new EP. And, uh, I was actually talking to my boy CJ Solar the other day, uh, about going back up there and recording a new a new EP and uh, he's like man he told me he's like yeah, you, you said it can happen but it's just it's it's a pain right now with everybody wearing the mask and you know they don't want to you know it's kind of like they're being all particular and stuff like that right. he said it's not going to be like last time right. and i was like well i might want to push off you know wait a minute just wait you know wait a little while you know, so, cuz then after then you get five more songs then you got to start writing again and uh, I just I'm not that great of a writer, but I I try. Yeah. You know, I try, and uh, I don't think I'm that great of a writer anyway. 
Well, but so in the in the writing process, are you writing like just the lyrics, and then your guys get together and play a tune, or do you got to write? Out I pretty the much music write the whole and, song, and then we'll okay. we'll uh, you know, me and me and Seth, the cop, one of my guitar players, we'll get together and we'll kind of go over it and come up with some stuff. He gives me some great ideas, and you know, and he does a great job on making demos and uh, just from his house, you know, just good enough where you know the producer can hear it or whatever and say you know let's do this here or whatever but uh he does a great job with that and uh so yeah i mean writing uh, like i said i wrote i wrote a few more songs during quarantine but what was the question again i got lost all um you did too, huh? Yeah, I did too. I, 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 got, caught, I got caught up in all and that. It ain't the beers because we just started. Right. <laughs> oh, is it? Do you find it easier to write originals and get them out there? Oh, with the uh, with yeah. social. I'm sorry. I got. I was trying to make the. I was trying to make the answer long and flow so the show would go on, but uh, people out there are probably tired of hearing me talk. Nah, nah. Um, okay, so going to the, the the business side of the band, what is it? What is it like running the band from a business standpoint? I mean, because you've <laughs> right right now it's tough. But before, you know, 2019. Yeah. What 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 was it like running the business then, trying to book shows? I mean, because you don't, from what I understand, it's just not a full time gig for anybody in yeah. the band, right? It's yeah. Just, it'd be great. Uh, to no, be we full-time. all got most of us. Well, for some of us, it is. One of us is a full time gig, mm-hmm. uh, but the other five, we all got. We got. So I don't know which one you'd call our side hustle, <laughs> but yeah, uh, an, an additional. Job. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I survey land by trade. And uh, I love surveying. I love being out in the woods. I love, you know, being working by myself. And uh, but and all, and other guys. Uh, Travis, the bass player, he runs Carter Plantation out there and the golf course. He's a, he's the manager out there. And Trent works for uh, Mockler Beverage, and uh, that's Bud Lights, our, our good buddy. I mean, yeah. got, I want to hear the story behind that too. Oh yeah, uh, Trent works for Mockler Beverage and uh, Ross. Was is a uh, Ross is a heavy equipment sales? Uh, no, he was he works in heavy equipment. He was okay. like a, I don't know what he's doing now, but he in heavy equipment. But uh, and then Zach has a dump truck and hauls hauls dirt and stuff and stuff like that. And uh, got, I we can't forget. Oh, I got to give a shout out to my uh, our sound guy Travis and our uh, equipment guy and bus driver Michael. They they're like they're 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 part of like they're like the band mm-hmm. like they might not be on stage but them dudes like when they when somebody gets a phone call they they right in the mix with it and we're all yeah. on a group text you know right well because so, it's when when we, when we see you on the band there's a on the stage there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that we don't see yeah we don't see all the cables being run hey. we don't see the mixers and all that the the not so fun part about the band well for the sound guys it's fun because they love doing that but yeah. for the setup and takedown. I mean, how long yeah. did it end up taking y'all to set up for a show? Well, now we don't have to do anything. I mean, they do it for us, but uh, and that's that's one of the most amazing things that ever could have happened. Because let me tell you what, let me tell you why most bands don't ever go as far. It's because they gotta set up and take down equipment, and they get tired of it. Yeah. I mean, we did it for a long time, man, and uh, and then finally we just kept getting you know bigger and bigger and bigger. Went to where we didn't have we can afford to pay somebody to do it. I mean, let me tell you what. You're talking about lift a burden off a shoulder, whoo, and you get to, like, I just hand them my stuff, and I can just go straight home right after the show. I right? ain't got to worry about staying another two hours. So when so when you pay, you know, these people's, you know, paying these musicians around here, and, uh, you know, they pay them to play. Well, you're not only paying them for their – they're four hours on stage or whatever. They're going to be out there two hours before, two and a half hours before setting up, two hours and a, or two and a half hours taking down, rolling oh, it's, up. It's a table. six and a half, eight, down. it's a full work oh, day. Oh, man. Some of the nights I done had. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, but it's, it's rough. But, but yeah, man, those guys, are, they helped us out a lot. But just being able to being able to get those guys and uh, love them to death. Love them like a, like a brother, all of them. Yeah. That's that's incredible, and so now we've got this that this transition to not the normal five thousand, ten thousand people. Are y'all doing some unique stuff to kind of play virtually? Y'all trying to find some smaller places to do? What are y'all trying to well, do now? 
we did a couple of virtual shows and we did some some good ones over there in Lake Charles. God bless them, man. That they and my buddies over there went through they're going through hell right now with that storm. Right. But uh uh Marvin Simon, my buddy over there, put together these big virtual shows when this stuff hit and you know, just trying to get people, just trying to keep people in the in the live music, man. Right. And actually raising money for a good cause doing it, you know. Yeah. And uh we done a couple of them. We did a couple of it uh, of it, uh, the basin over there. Uh <clears throat> Brian Ott, good friend of mine, and he owns the basin and he let us he, Brian's great too. Brian's like family too. He lets us go in there and practice anytime we want to, you know, and he don't he don't bat an eye. Give me the key. He already tell us what the key is. And, and uh he will let us go in there and practice. But uh but yeah, man, it's it's all these people that that's helped us tremendously. Yeah. And I can't I can't thank them. And it's a lot of people that PCL didn't do this by themselves, I'm telling you. There's a lot of people that that's been involved throughout the years oh, yeah. to get to get us to where I'm not saying we're big at all, but to get us to where we are now, you know. Right. To, well, to yeah. to show the constant growth over the years, yeah. you know, you're not you're not still a three piece playing at a daiquiri bar. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Hot tails and new roads. First gig. I still hey, remember that. That's that's right. Remember where you, remember where you came from, so mm-hmm. you can always go back. So exactly. what what was the worst show that you ever had? In whichever way you find it worse, I'm not talking turnout. Man, I, I'm gonna have to say there's been some there's been some ones that don't turn out like you really want to, but I'm gonna have to say I I, I just I don't know I, I'd probably have to say the worst show that I don't like doing is I don't like doing weddings. So I, I, and we and when people call all the time and I'm just like and they'll, they'll call and and well Casey takes the calls now but they used to call and I'm like man we don't do weddings. <laughs> We had we had too many but because you know and, and and I love weddings I have fun at weddings but I'm yeah. not I'm not I don't sing wedding music I I, I used to uh, <laughs> I sing I used, I used to DJ weddings so yeah. I, I I feel you on that yeah. I sing honky tonk I mean I don't sing boogie woogie shoes like I sing right. uh, all my ratty frowns have settled down you know yeah and and see I sing beer drinking music I like that's what I like to do and and so they would ask me and they, they would say they always say the, the, the best is they always say oh, well we like y'all man we come to y'all shows all the time I was like well man thank you but I said your grandma probably don't like us and uh, your great aunt don't like us and everybody that's gonna be listening to us going like this yeah it's like, and y'all, only four of y'all out there going woo so, I, so I, I think weddings would probably have to be my my worst my worst show like a wedding that I, you know not just one in particular but yeah, I just, just don't wed, like doing, yeah just general. wedding in general right. yeah so what was your your y'all's favorite show to ever do man I've had a lot of them I'll tell you what we, well, we got to play we got we got to play in, in Tiger Stadium for Body Country Superfest okay that's a big show yeah I mean you know we were the first band and uh, and, and you know it was still, it was still a lot of people in there to me I mean the, the stadium was like didn't look full at all but it was you know, it was filling up. Everybody was getting in there, and and uh, but man, that that was a great experience. Just to, not only the crowd, but the uh, just being in in the in Tiger Stadium. I mean, yeah, play, playing in Tiger Stadium is no joke. Yeah, doing anything well in Tiger Stadium. And just is seeing no that joke. big old stage. I mean, the stage was huge. I mean, that catwalk you could just walk out there and giving people a high five. I mean, it was just great. Like stuff you see on TV. Like I got the experience. Right. You know, and. uh so that was probably that was one of my fa- one of good shows, and another favorite show that I had, and I've never been before, and it was just just packed right before this stuff hit, mm-hmm. and and I'm so glad that we got to do it before coronavirus hit. But uh, Bacchus Ball in New Orleans was unreal. The people in there, I had so much fun that night, and I had to go home. I had to drive home from New Orleans, Louisiana, to uh. Rosedale, Louisiana, and I had to go. I had to leave, and I had to go get a couple hours sleep, and I had to get up and be on a plane for six a.m. to go to, to fly to go skiing for a week for Mardi Gras. Man, so, yeah, but I, I I won't do that again next time. I'm gonna, if we get to play another fly to New Orleans. I hope <laughs> I, I hope we get to play uh uh Mardi Gras ball this year. I don't I don't care which one it is, but man, them things are so much fun. Like playing, I don't know. I don't know if I would. I would want to actually, I don't know. I guess I could go to it now that I've been to one. Cause I'm not big in the big crowds. You know what I mean? I just kind of yeah, person. It's just kind of crowd. Yeah, the big crowds and you're a lead singer in a band. Yeah. Well, I'm just talking about like I don't like to beat in them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, got I like you, to I got be you. able to just get out of there if I need to. You yeah. Know? But uh, 
it's just the way I've always been. But, uh, but man, I, I, if I have a chance to play one in Mardi Gras, that would probably be one of my favorite shows besides Bayou Country Superfest. There are so many good ones, though. Uncle Earl's for, uh, was 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 phenomenal show around here, like a local show. Yeah, with, I was at I was at y'all's Earl's one after the uh, Piazza wedding. Oh, uh, okay. For the for the, oh, the yeah. little after party wedding, yeah. that was a fun time. And uh, well, the, the funnest is when the St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I wasn't able. To, that was in what eighteen or was that nineteen? No, uh, that was nineteen, right? The year before last. Oh, we didn't have it this year because of the Corona. But that was in twenty twenty though. So was it twenty nineteen? Mm-hmm. So it was twenty nineteen that y'all did the whole. Uh, ran out the parking lot next door. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. And that was that was a big, big turnout. Yep. Um. So okay, moving. I want to move into the Bud Light story. What's the story behind the Bud Light? Man. All right. Tell this story. Uh, what, of what can be told. We were playing at uh at the you know where they have where the the bottom of the the ramps come together at the PMAC. Well, they yes. had the, the, the sports properties show, I guess you could say, LSU sports yes. property. Uh, they usually bring a band. If we have if we play Bama at home, they'll bring a big band out yeah, there. Yeah, well, every home game they have one. Oh, they do have one yeah, for every home yeah, game? Yeah, Okay. So, we, I mean, we've done it for a couple of years back, you know. We've done it every year. But uh, we were playing one time and a couple of years ago and uh, got done playing, man. It was hot outside. and I, I got I handed, my, I handed my guitar off and I went off stage and I grabbed me an ice cold and I – you know, chugging, chugging it up, about getting ready, just resting up a little bit. And uh, somebody come up, and uh, somebody come up and ask me. He's like, "Hey, man, who do I need to talk to you about getting you guys in to uh, maybe talk about a sponsorship of Bud Light?" And I was like, "I was like, man, I, I said, I guess you talk to my manager, Casey." And so he goes, "Oh, okay, man, I, I appreciate it." So a little, I went over to Casey after that. And he go and I said, man, Casey, some guy just came up to me talking about uh wanting to set up a meeting or something Monday. This was on Saturday about uh, maybe doing a sponsorship with with Bud Light. And he was like, he looked at me, he goes, "Well, did you get his name?" And I was like, <laughs> "No." I said, he goes, well, "Why didn't you get him?" He tells this story to the day. He's like, "Why didn't you get his name, dude?" I'm like, I like. Man, I ain't worried about that. I just want to drink beer and play music. <laughs> that's what I told him. I said, that's what you're here for. That's what I'm here for. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I just want to drink old beer and play music and have a good time. And uh, so that's what. It, so that's how they ended up coming together. And we we had a meeting. And uh, I mean, with Chris Davis, who is now one of my good buddies. And they, uh, by the way, he just he has a big old camp up there on Toledo Bend. And, they got bad up there during a the hurricane. I just talked yeah. to him. I just talked to him. And he said it was it wasn't fun at all. Yeah, I had a I got a brother lives out in Deritter, and he came back and he said, and Deritter was way away from oh, everybody. I know. Oh yeah, they got it. Yeah, he said we're like out of power for like three weeks right now. Oh, the whole the whole up wherever. Yeah, wherever. right right up, right up the coastline until south southwest Louisiana just got. I mean, I'm sure you can if you walked, you could see a whole path. Yeah, of where it just hit. But anyway, Chris, you know, Chris saw something in us. And that, you know, he wanted to, that, that he thought that could push the brand. And, I mean, I'm going to tell you what. I mean, Bud Light, they're, they're, branding, they're a branding company. They love, they, they, it's, it's all about family. It's all about branding. And, and it's about taking care of one another. And uh, so we, he got us, we, we ended up signing, a, a, you know, a deal with them. And then about six months later, Chris said, called me one day and he was like, man, I got some, I got some good news. He said, I've talked to the main, some guys, and they they want a piece of the pie, and uh, for Anheuser Busch, uh, you know, for or in a regional area, you know. Right. And I was like, man, it's great, you know. He's like, well, let's get together, you know. We had another meeting, and ended up signing another, a new deal, you know. And they they joined in, so it was Michael Beverage, Baton Rouge area, right. And then and the regional deal came in, and uh, you know, we got very, very blessed to get that, man. And and I, I feel so bad because, I mean, we were we were going so strong and going strong, strong, strong. And then the coronavirus hit. And, and I mean, I, I thought something – I literally thought something was good was about to happen with PCL. I mean, more stuff kept popping up and right. popping up. You know, I, just got, I just saw yeah, like, y'all just down. the bus and all that stuff that y'all just got yeah. redone and everything. Y'all yeah. ready for ready for going on Ready shows. for hitting the road a little, a little better than we were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. So man, that's that's crazy. So, getting getting that sponsorship, I know is is huge. But then you also y'all also have a song, yeah, like about Bud Light. So yeah, what was yeah, that process we, we covered like? we uh 
we actually put it on our on our last EP. Uh, so what's hang on? What's EP? A EP. I don't even know exactly what it what it stands for. I, and I, I should. I, and I used to know. My mind just went blank. Uh, Does Carl know? Somebody what EP could is? probably tell us out there. You know what it yeah. stands for. But anyway, if somebody, so if somebody a, knows on Facebook. So an EP. It, so we'll an EP. So an album is an album. An right. EP is something that people do now instead of instead of like putting eleven or ten, eleven, twelve songs on an album. You know, you don't. It's like an individual. Now you it's can like go. A single so almost. if you put out a whole album and you only like one of my songs, well, I done wasted all that time and money, and you're only buying one song on iTunes. You know what I mean? So people yeah. kind of go the shorter route now. So it's kind of like a sing, putting out a single or something. Yeah. Well, no, it's not. It's a, a single. It's more like four or five songs. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, so that's what we do at a time now. I mean, I don't have time. So, like I said, we all got jobs. Right. I don't have time to sit down and just write, write, write. I would love to, and but I would need some help. You know, I, I need some help. Well, yeah, you but gotta, uh, you got to have enough. Money but anyway, to the Bud Light song, CJ Solar from Baton Rouge, he's from Baton Rouge, and man, he's he's doing good. I mean, he's wrote a couple number one songs and uh, up there in Nashville, and uh, you know we've always been buddies with CJ, and he helped us tremendously on our on our second EP, and and uh, he called me one day and he was like, man, I, I got a song me and my buddy just wrote. And he said. I can't think of no no other guys to, to offer to than y'all, and it was called Bud Light. Well, he didn't even have a name for it. I don't think. I think we named it Bud Light, but but uh, and so I listened to the song, and I was like, "Yeah, man, I dig a song." Well, I listen. To it. I'm the kind of person that listens to a song over and over and over and over, especially if it's one of my own, because I'm trying to catch every little you know detail that I can fix. But uh, I listen to it over and over. And the more I listen to it, the more I fell in love. It just had like a like a drive, almost kind of countryish rock drive, and we didn't have a song like that. And uh, so I told him, I was like, "Bro, I said, yeah, let's let's do it." So we got it, we got it, and we went up there and recorded it along with uh, four of my songs, that you know, our songs that I, that we wrote. And uh, we we wrote one. Speaking of that, we wrote we wrote a new one called Heartache. And we all wrote the only song we ever sat down and wrote together. And I had the base of it already done, but the only song we ever sat down and wrote all together was. Uh, uh, heartache it's a, it's the one that we're about to put on this next album yeah and uh it we all said in miami when we played the super bowl when we, we went up there and played oh yeah did like a super bowl i saw that yeah, yeah like we saw we played for bud light like up there with okay. jake owen yep and uh we did that and and we all sat down we didn't we didn't really have anything to do the whole weekend we just got a free trip to miami and and just you know play music we, yeah we sat in a ho we sat on a balcony and just played and played, and we we wrote we wrote a couple of songs, and tried to write more songs, and just played other, and it was, it was a great time, just a relaxing time for for everybody just to sit down and enjoy each other's company. Cause we always, you know, as soon as the show's over, we got to go home. I got kids, and you know, he's got kids, and his right. wife wife's busy, and then, you know, yeah, 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 get on. Everybody's got lives outside. Yeah, of the yeah, one hundred percent. So I mean, so it was just, and we didn't bring the we didn't bring the old ladies this time, you know. We left them back, and then they was they was kind of mad. But they actually got to go to uh, to uh, Key West, Florida, not too long before that. So they oh, they, they was kind of like, right. yeah, they was kind of like, we'll let this one slide. Yeah. But usually so, we try to take them every time we got a, a show like that. And that and that that's good to do is to bring the bring the family with you, so it's more oh, yeah. so it's not just oh dad dad's going off on a on a business trip. It's oh no, we're going with him to support yeah. him and be there with him. Yeah, but exactly. What, what came first? Was it the, the song or the sponsorship came first? Because uh, I mean, it's a song about Bud Light. You know what? It was almost no. It was a sponsorship. So because okay. yeah, when because so it had to be because CJ was like, man, I can't think of no better guy. Well, yeah, yeah. At, that, at that point, you got the sponsorship locked, and it's like, yeah. hey, now we need a song about Bud Light or something. Yeah, yeah. So, what are some like three three lessons that you've learned along the way in going from? Ch rock or church, whichever came first, to now country, from a three piece now to a six piece. I mean, you, you've got to, you've had to have gathered some lessons in both the business side of the band and also the musical side of the band, and it's kind of managing all that. So, what kind of lessons have you gathered along the way? Well, the business, the business side, you know, uh, it's just kind of every 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 day's new on the business side because you know we're not we're not that 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 big. You know, I mean, we we make a little money, but but uh, you know we we got we got people. Everybody does their job on the business side. You know everybody. You know we got people assigned to do to do their job. And I mean Casey McKenzie, our manager, does a great job booking shows and you know negotiating and contacting and this and that. 
And uh, so we, that side's taken care of. And then you got the financial side. You know, we kind of we kind of all do it. You know, the big business decisions. You know, it's kind of we kind of all get together and just you know just think we just sit down and say, hey, what's the best what's the best scenario that uh, uh, this you know, and we all put in our two cents and you know yeah. go from there. Yeah, the business side, it, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard, uh, but you know we we get through it. I guess I guess you could say <laughs> we get through it. Take it day by day. Yeah, day by day. But the music side, uh, you know what? Uh, something, something. I don't know. Something I learned. Uh, like whether it be like the songwriting I, process. Remain humble. Or, yeah. Remain humble, because anything can happen. Just like coronavirus. Remain humble. Then you ain't nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, who, who knows? I mean, we we might we might play a show when we, everybody go to the bar and then we got five people out in the crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah, we we still gonna have fun with five people. Oh, well, five. That's the, those five people gonna have the best time of their <laughs> yes, lives. Exactly. <laughs> you know that's right. Exactly. Yeah, or or you're gonna be it's gonna be streaming and it's gonna be entirely different. You're gonna have to interact. I ain't doing with, that. With I'll get out of music. Crowd. I'll get out of music before I do it streaming for. Yeah, I'll, I'll get out. I ain't in all that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's different. I'm not a big technology guy. So, I get. That. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Okay, so what? What kind of pushed you here to Baton Rouge, moving from? I mean, you grew well, up in Mississippi. Yeah, why'd you come I mean, here, and why are you still here? I've always grew up an LSU Tiger fan, because I mean, That's I live. I literally lived on the state line. We could shoot a squirrel in Mississippi and Atlanta, Louisiana. But it always landed in Mississippi because you had a hunt license. We, all, in Mississippi. we, we probably shot a couple in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so we when we came to town, we had three choices. We could either, or made two choices. We either went to. We either went north to Macomb, right, or northeast, or we would come south to Baton Rouge. I mean, and my mama grew up in in uh, in Slaughter, so Zachary area, I guess you could say. And uh, so, I mean, I, I grew up playing baseball in Clinton, right up the road from Baton Rouge, and so we always came to Baton Rouge. We need to go to the mall or whatever. We need to go to grocery, big time grocery shopping. You know, we'd go come to Baton Rouge. So about always, Baton Rouge always had a special place. You know, right. And uh, I always grew up a Tiger fan. I didn't even know. I literally, when I was when I was younger, I didn't even know about the Mississippi State Bulldogs or the Ole Miss Rebels. It was I, all I, LSU Tigers. What? Yeah, one hundred percent. Like I, that's all I knew because I always hung out. I mean, when I played baseball in our little league in Clinton, you know, I mean, I hung out with everybody in Louisiana, right? You know, but because uh, I, I literally lived on the state line, it was quicker for us to go to Clinton, you know, to go to anywhere. But, but anyway, man, I, 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 I just love, I, 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 I fell in love with Baton Rouge, you know, playing uh, the people around here and the businesses and the, and uh, the people I've I've been able to meet through playing music and um, and and meeting these great people around here and the business owners and bar owners and uh, restaurant owners and uh, just everything, man. I mean, I've got to meet so many great people. It's unreal. And the good friends of mine that I could call and they can call me and I can call them. And, and if they need something, I'll drop anything. I'll drop what I'm doing. If they need my shirt, I'll give it off my back. I don't care. Yeah. Like, because just kind of person I am. I mean, and, right. and they would do the same thing for me. I actually called one of my buddies for some uh, financial, I mean, uh, Financial advice from my surveying business, you know, the other day. I was I called him and asked him. I was like, text him. He was like, hey, man, give me a call. He's like, all right, give me a call in a little while. He called me, and I asked him. He helped me out, you know. That's just the way – that's what it, friends are for, you know. And, I, and to, to be able to to meet the people that I have in this industry has been unreal, and I'm so blessed, you know. Oh, 100%. And that's – I've we, we're on, like, I think episode 50 or something like that of the show. Dang. And the theme that I've seen from asking people those that question – Cheers, by the way, 50th anniversary. Thank you, sir. That's right. He is he 50? Close. Wait, no, because we just had 48 today. Was Memphis. 49. So you're 50. Yeah. You're episode 50, man. Congrats. Thank hey, you. That's 50, 50 episodes. I'm not 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but o- over the over the past 50 episodes, we've seen I've seen a theme of Baton Rouge is so community driven. Yeah, they're they're willing to give you the shirt off their back for whatever it is. Yeah, I mean it could be hey I got a flat tire and I'm out here and you know 
Clinton or I'm out here in wherever at you're Rosedale. at. I, yeah, Rosedale. <laughs> right, you know, or Central or wherever. And it's, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming to help you out. And I'm coming just be there for you to help you in any way I can. And even with this Hurricane Laura stuff. I mean, people are left and right starting, hey, we're going to do this donations, we're going to do these donations, we're going to take all this stuff down and help people out. That's just who we are as a community. Yeah, and you know why? Because that's the way people were raised around here. Right. And and another thing is they've already been through it. They've been through all kind of hurricanes. They've been through floods. And they've already been through it. So they know what the people are going through. That's right. So guess what they're going to do? They were raised right. They're going to get up and they're going to go help them. Yeah. We, we went through 2016. Yeah. And now we're in 2020 and... Laura just was a... God knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah. What else is going to happen? That's, huh? that's, that's right. This, this 2020 needs to just clo- close the book. I'm out. Clo- I close the it. book. Let's, open, tagged let's out. open the new one. Hey, I've been doing a lot of... I, one thing I, about this quarantine, though, that, I, that I've uh, enjoyed a lot is uh, being able to hang out with my friends and family, man, because I've been playing music yes. for for uh, weekend after weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I'm just gone, 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 gone. And I, you know, I go to a birthday. I wake up. I, I play a show Friday night. This is this is my life on the weekends when we play music. Right. I wake up on a uh, on a. I go. To, I play a show Friday night. Drive home. I wake up on a Saturday morning, and I'm just like about you know I can't sleep that that late. So I wake up about eight nine o'clock, and uh, I get I go to my wife. Said we going to a birthday party or something like that. So I go to the birthday party, you know, I'm kind of getting back in it, getting the groove of things of the day, and, right. and I'm having a good time, crack me open a co- couple of cold ones at the birthday party, and like, got to go. Everybody else stays and has fun. Dude, I got to go. Every time I start having fun, I got to go play music. So I've been doing that weekend after weekend after weekend. So this, this, this uh, you know, quarantine whole thing, coronavirus, you know, I can sit there, and, and, I, and I'm mad at it. I mean, I, you know, I, it, it ruined, I'm ready to get back to, Right. To, to play in. Yeah. But I got it to say, man, just, just be able to hang out with my kids and, and go fishing. I stay in the I stay in the woods over there in the spillway where I live in gross tape. And just to be able to do what I want what I what I love to do. Yeah. You know, I love to play music. And that's I mean, I love to play music or I wouldn't do it. Right. But, <laughs> but I love to hang out. I mean, we cook over there, we fish, we hunt, we you know, yeah. everything that I love living over there and everything that I do that I wanted that I want to do if I'm not playing music I've been able to do during this time right and that's all the bad things that have happened yeah in 2020 all the yeah. negatives that have come oh, it up makes and it so stuff, good it's the positive side of it that I look at is for me like and I can only speak of my experience that's all I've got yeah is from my wife and I how close we've grown yeah from great. having to be at home from having to go out and do that could walks also every day. Be it, could also, bad. it could also be bad. It could also be bad. It could also be real bad that you're stuck at home yeah. and everybody's just mad. They want to get out. They want to go do something. But for those that have always been away and haven't had that time and they're able to come back and say, man, I really enjoy this. I yeah. really enjoy spending time with my family. I mean, we would go on bike rides. We'd go running. That's and great. we'd get more active. And we would see everybody else in the community. I mean, we'd go walk through Seven Oaks or you know through Mid-City. Yeah. There'd be people everywhere. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this because exactly. beforehand they were all in their cars zooming from point A to point B. And they would just try to get where they were going and get back home. Oh yeah. As quick as they could. But now everybody's we've our whole life has slowed down. Yeah. We've I mean, had to take we've had to take a that's step. That's why I've back. enjoyed it. Yeah. It's that this the slower pace of life yeah. that we've gone through is like, man, this is it's like a breath of fresh air from what is such a bad thing. And I'm sure not everybody's experience has been like that. Yeah. I'm sure it's been really oh, yeah. hard. But for those that can relate to that, it's something that you have to take a step back and like, oh, well, yeah, I, I was working like 12, 14 hour shifts yep. and seeing my wife for like two in the course of three days. But now yep. it's, oh, now I'm exactly. seeing her a lot more. I'm seeing my kids a lot more. My relationship with my kids are getting better. It's, it's great. You have to focus on the positives in times of darkness. Yeah. Because if not, you'll drown yourself. Out. Exactly. And it, you'll lose yourself. And then next thing you know, you're off on the deep end. It's, it's hard to come back. Yep. So yeah. I'm glad that's I'm not. And I'm I get not, mad sometimes, man. The opportunities that's, that I, I think that you know I think about what could have happened in 2020 because we was going so good, you know we was, we was on a roll. I mean it was snowballing, and then all of a sudden, bam, you know just just drop and and so and I and I think about it. I get mad sometimes, but then I look at them, th- that wife and kids, you know, and I'm just like, I don't matter. Yeah, 
don't matter. I get to, I get to do this, you know. Yeah. I get to, I mean, I, and I'm such a joy. We've been on levee rides and seen sunsets so many times in 2020 over there in, in good old Raymond, Rosedale, Gross Tate area. And, and uh, from a kid point of view, that's what they're going to remember. Oh, yeah. They're not going to remember – about uh, my daddy COVID being gone or playing coronavirus. Music. They're, they're, yeah. they're gonna be, oh my gosh, y'all in 2020. Yeah. I saw my dad the most ever saw him because yeah, exactly. he was home, mm-hmm. and we got to grow our relationship as a as a as a father as a father kid fit. It's so hard to situation. leave those kids. Yeah. It's so hard to leave those kids, man. When uh when I got to leave about when I got to take out about six o'clock, five o'clock, or or hell even shit. I've, I've left four thirty in the mornings on for a road trip. You know, to fly to Fort La- Fort Lauderdale. To, Florida and play a show, you know, wherever. Yeah. Fort Myers, I think is where it was. And then fly back the same day and then get in at, at, at midnight, you know. It's crazy, bro, the stuff, the stuff we, we've done and, and had to be away from our families. But, I mean, they, that's one thing about us. We got some good families. You, you, you have to yes. play music. To, to be <laughs> gone that much. You got to have somebody gotta, that understands, you know. Yeah. And, I, I mean, you know, me and my wife, we've had, we've had our bickering moments about it, you know. But, I mean – it's just that, that I'm sure everybody has. Everybody has because it, it's hard when you're going through the muck trying yeah. to get to that next level. Yeah. And you're just at the base. And because when the time to cash ratio is not there yet. Exactly. It's not It's not even close to where you want it to be. Exactly. You're, you're putting, you know, 100x in time and you're receiving a third of X Correct. in money. And it's like, where, when's it going to pay off? And so it's getting through that muck, getting through that long time frame of building something. Yeah. Because every overnight success has 20 years behind it. Exactly. And nobody, everybody sees the, oh, they woke up the next day and they were big. Yep. They woke up the next day, their business took off. They woke Correct. up the next day, they are boom, massive. But it's not what happens. Yeah. It's putting in the work, putting in the weekends away from the family, the nights away from the family, and building something that's going to last that – in five, ten years, you look back and you say, man, look what we've built. Yeah. Look how far we've come. And that's exactly what we've done, you know. I mean, we've come a, come a good little ways to say, to say, you know, we're a Baton Rouge band, you know, a Baton Rouge-based band. We've, I mean, we've done well. We've done pretty well. And, uh, you know, the guys are all grateful for whatever we got to do. And I miss those dudes, man. Yeah. I miss them. And uh, and I talk, I mean, we still talk. I mean, but – you know, we we get together and practice, or if we got something to do, we'll get together and, and and play like a virtual show or something like that. But other than that, just everybody's been kind of doing their own thing. I've been able to kick this little surveying thing I got going off. You know, I've been able to concentrate on that a little bit for when for when music's not there. You yeah, know? I so mean, uh, you gotta have you gotta have a backup that you don't have everything in one basket. Yeah, yeah. So doing that is kind of hedge, hedging your bets, I guess you could say. Yeah, exactly right. right. But man, I I appreciate you coming on the show, man. I hey, appreciate man. you being number fifty. I didn't. I do. I'm sad we were fifty Special. minutes into the show, and I realized we should have had us a bottle of champagne right Gosh, there. I know. We should have done something like that. But thank you, Derek, for coming on the show. Thank man. you for I having me, dude. It. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I'm so uh, long winded and boring, but uh, I love that's that's why I started the show selfishly. I started the show to hear people's stories. There you go. <laughs> to hear people telling them telling me what they've done over the years and how they built something and what it is now, even if they just started yesterday. There's a lot of time that went into that yesterday. Yeah, man. So I'm glad that you had the time to come. I'm glad we have been making it work. I've been trying to get this show nailed down for like three months, right? Oh, yeah. So, something like it's that. It's tough, dude, because, I, I mean, like today, I have to fight that traffic coming across that bridge. And uh, I was I was a little worried, so I left a little early and I got here a little early. But, but uh, you know, when I get over across that bridge, I don't want to come back. Yeah, you know I, don't I don't blame you. You know what I'm saying? Man. So, like, I told Casey, I was like, man, I ain't, you know, and, and I've been doing a lot of work in uh, East Feliciana Parish, so, and, you know, we're come, going home and then having to come back to Baton Rouge. So I'm glad, but I'm glad we got to do it, bro. I Me really, too, man. I really enjoyed our time together, man. I'm glad we got to, sh- to share a cold one again. Yeah. You drink a Bud Light and I'll drink an Ultra. Hey, that's all right. <laughs> but I appreciate it, man. I appreciate everybody else for tuning Thank in y'all. to the show. Whether you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube or whatever platform and listening to us on whatever platform, I thank you. I'm appreciative, and thank you for standing in for 50 episodes now, guys. I really appreciate that, and we're going to keep on going and keep trudging forward. I'm Patty G with the Patty G Show here with Derek Shipley of Parrish County Line in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Thank you all, and you all have a good one.